Hi everyone, and welcome to Talking ELT, the easiest place to learn about the big issues in language teaching. We're here to cover the topics that you're interested in, and today we're going to be talking about artificial intelligence. I'm joined by Ben Knight, Head of Research and Pedagogy at Oxford University Press, and Hayo Reinders, Professor of TESOL and Head of Research at Anaheim University. Thanks for joining me, guys. Good morning. It's a pleasure. Um, so before, before we start, one, one quick note. Um, today we're not going to be talking about the practical applications of AI in the classroom or giving tips or ideas. Um, Ben's actually done a talk on that at our ELT online conference. So if you want to learn about the practical issues around AI and how you can use it um, in your teaching, go watch that. We'll include a link in the description. Um, today's conversation is going to be more about the implications of AI for the future. In the, in the medium term, how is it going to impact teaching, learning, assessment? How is it going to change the way we approach things? Um, what dangers are there? What possibilities are there? And what do we need to watch out for? And how can we shape it? Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd like to jump into that with both of you. Because um, to be honest, I know very little about this. And I'm, I'm excited to learn from you guys. So my first question, I think this is really important to kind of set the scene. What do we mean by artificial intelligence? What, what kind of tools and platforms and areas are we talking about when we use this term? I mean, in my mind, when I talk about artificial intelligence, what I think of is getting computers or systems to do what we normally associate with humans doing with intelligence. So it's artificial, it's not a human, but it's doing the kind of things we associate with humans. So in that sense, it's a moving target. Okay. As we start to take things for granted as done by machines, and therefore we think other things are uh, the, the the realm of human intelligence, then our expectations of human of AI start to change. That makes sense. That makes sense. And Hayo, would you add well, anything? Well, yes, absolutely agree with that. And it's also probably worth just pointing out early on in the conversation that AI is not something that just happened in the last six months with the arrival of ChatGPT. It's actually a, a very large range of developments, um, techniques, uh, technologies um, that have been in, in emergence since the 1950s. And the reason why we're now talking about it is because it's it's come to a point, to an inflection point, where it's it's in some ways now ready for mass consumption and so we now have this this interface like judge gpt and other systems like it that we can actually that that everyday uh, people who are not engineers or computer scientists uh, can actually work with right? mm. Mm. would you would you also say the rate of development is accelerating in recent years well it has been and and, and that's generally the case for <coughs> computational technologies um, I think perhaps more interesting and important is that you you see different developments in different fields, and at some point they come together, and suddenly, uh, because of they are coming together, things are possible. A lot of things are suddenly possible. You see what I mean? It's not uh, an incremental. It might be an incremental development in this area and in this area, but if they come together, and suddenly you have this explosion of new ideas and possibilities. I think that's where we are at the moment, which is both exciting and, and a little bit uh, scary at the same time. Yeah, and I think particularly the advance in natural language processing mm. that has meant the interface has become uh, open to everybody, yeah. that we can speak naturally and we can understand the answers straight away uh, immediately. I think that's made it a bit of a watershed moment. Mm. That makes a lot of sense. One of the things you mentioned just now, which I thought was interesting, is that AI has been around for a while and it's becoming more accessible, so that's why it's creating these changes and everyone's seeing it as this new thing. But of course, we have lived through new technologies in the past. Um, the internet came around, that changed everything. Um, I remember when people were saying calculators in the classroom were going to mean that everyone lost their math skills. Does anything set AI apart, like in, in terms of its impact? Is there anything that makes it distinct compared to the previous changes we've we've experienced? Good question. Yeah. I mean, it, even your example of the calculator, well, it, it has had a huge impact. Uh, it does change the way that we do basic maths uh, and you can carry it around and now it's on your phone and uh, all that. So it, uh, similarly with the internet, has had a big impact, but it hasn't uh, changed the need for some of the basic skills that we still need for maths and for communication and for, for knowledge so I, I think it's the same yeah and just also to to add on to that i think uh one fundamental difference is that a calculator or even the internet 
um, although to a larger degree, <clears throat> enhances what we what we do. Right. Yeah. Whereas uh, the difference with AI is that it has the the potential already being realized now to learn by itself and to create realities, if we want to go there, uh, that we have not been able, would not have been able to anticipate okay. ourselves. And I think, I think so the answer is in some ways it is similar to another major technological change. Mm. But I think the big question marks at the moment are around the things that we don't know we don't know, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. It can transform things in ways we're just not expecting. Right. right. Okay. Well, I would like I would like to explore that a bit and talk about some of the ways it can transform teaching, learning, um, and I, I think I think let's probably start with what all our listeners are most interested in, which is what is the impact of AI going to be on teaching, on the way we teach, whether that's in the classroom, whether that's remotely. Um, I'd like to explore the impact on teaching practice um, and on pedagogy, I guess. So. I'm going to leave that quite open. <laughs> That's a very big question. I know, I know. <laughs> Chris is the master of asking these enormously <laughs> <Yeah>. broad questions. <laughs> yeah. um. Well, I kind of feel this is an opportunity for you to start. Oh, yeah. thank you so much, uh, Ben, for giving He's me He's very that. generous. He's, he is, he is. Well, look, in, in a way it's easy because there are so many different aspects that we could and probably throughout the conversation will end up talking about, right? So there is, n there is no, not one possible answer here uh, because you've mentioned for example in class and out of class well the answer to those two questions will be quite different but let's start perhaps with with the in class bit right because you started off asking about um, teaching and um, I think you know before we start discussing this and mm -hmm. hopefully generating some some thoughts on that through the discussion I think we need to perhaps first delineate the, the time frame we're yes. not talking about how it will change in 30 years yeah, because we I just think it's no idea. We, we don't know, and I think it would be unhelpful speculation. Um, I also don't think we need to talk about how it will change teaching tomorrow or in yeah. the next six months or even 12 months, because apart from uh, the occasional trial with ChatGPT, for example, I think AI is very far from being uh, a common uh, use in, mm -hmm. in teaching at the moment. So really we're talking about maybe, say, in the next you know, year to five years, right? Yeah. Um, and and so I would say that um, we can probably divide up the conversation around this in terms of the different the different jobs that we have as teachers. So maybe we could start with um, generating, creating materials and resources mm -hmm. as as one aspect, and then maybe we could talk about the delivery of content, you know, the, the classroom instruction or, you know, the feedback in as a separate uh, conversation. Would that help as a... I, think I really like that approach because yeah, we're thinking about what what does a teacher do? What, what does teaching involve? Mm -hmm. And then where does AI come into that? So you might, e and you may, you might even start with, uh, you know, a teacher decide, makes decisions about what's useful for the students to be learning. So, um, and they're doing that almost on two levels. They're doing that on the level of, uh, if you're going to learn English and you're at this level, these are the kind of things that are useful for you to be learning. Uh, if I'm going to, if I'm going to learn a, a, a new skill somewhere, I, I need to find a teacher who's able to break that skill up into little bits. So, mm. so there's there's that kind of curriculum syllabus thing, and then there's the what do you, what does this particular person really need. So I think mm. there's, so. Those are all kind of curriculum uh, as a big picture and uh, uh, in the moment. Yeah, yeah. I think that's yeah. a very helpful starting point because yeah. you, you've you've mentioned different things and they all involve essentially curation, right? I mean, that's one of the key mm. roles that we have as teachers. It's it's still why after having had the internet widely available to us for twenty five years now, we still have jobs as teachers. Whereas yep. in nineteen ninety five, yep. ninety six, people say, "Well, that's the end of of yeah. you know education as we know it." Yeah. But of course, we curate the experiences. <clears throat> we also have a role in in supporting our learners in developing the ability to curate their own experiences. So teaching learners how to find the right resources online, uh, choose appropriate materials, etc. Mm -hmm. So maybe we could dive into that topic of curation a little bit more mm -hmm. because you mentioned at least two different layers there. One is that there's a layer of curation in terms of identifying what the key components are of the subject that is being learned, 
or, or taught, right? So in the case of English, for example, you know, you have the different components of the English language. And putting them together in a systematic way is what a, a good teacher does. Right. Yeah. This comes before that. That relates to that, and helping build that journey. Yeah, exactly. The building blocks, right? So it's yeah. that, it's that structuring process, which then needs to be augmented by the insights that we have about our learners yeah. and what building block would be most appropriate for each individual learner, and. And sorry to really, we're very far away from your original broad question. <laughs> yeah, but go for it. I think this atomistic approach is absolutely necessary. Otherwise, you just end up talking in, in generalities. Yeah. So maybe, maybe we could talk about these two components separately, the systematization of the subject yeah. and the, the linking of that with the specific needs of individual students. Because I think AI will have a significant impact on, on both of those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? I can no, see I that. I agree with that. See, even when we talk about what you need to l l learn, what you need to master to be good at English. Mm. So we have at the moment a kind of canon of typical things that we think needs to be learned at each. Um, and it's passed down, you know, generation, generation of teachers is, is passed down. But actually what we have the potential for now is to have a, a better understanding of what people need to be good at in order to communicate effectively because we can build up that data from looking at people's attempts to communicate and that's something that hasn't been available to us mm. so I, I i can see us changing our uh, our understanding of the curriculum as a result of data from ai yeah, absolutely. And and a good example of, of one of the ways in which we've already been doing that is the use of corpora. Yeah. Right? Uh, using uh, machine learning yeah. uh, to identify patterns within large corpora, for example, has really informed, well, the development yeah. of, for example, yeah. uh, OUP's materials, right? Yeah. yeah. So that has been going on for decades, right? Yeah. Um, it also leads to questions around, uh, as you started off saying, you know, what is it that we think of as needing to be taught when we're talking about English at a particular level for particular purposes. And that, of mm -hmm. course, has changed, as you say, from one generation to the next. So, yeah. for example, now we teach social use of language and language in use more than we did perhaps 20 or 30 years yeah. ago, but also the inclusion of, for example, digital literacies and critical literacies and all sorts of other things that were not, you know, thought of as being part of English language teaching, you know, a few decades ago, yeah. now are. Yeah. And I think, again, AI is probably going to have some impact on that too yeah. at the very least uh, in the fact that we as teachers will now need to teach our learners how to make judicious use of this additional set of tools that Absolutely. is now available to them right? i mean like we do with the internet right <laughs> yeah yeah that's right uh, and certainly i mean that's one of the interesting things of um chat gpt and generative ai with uh, natural language processing for language teachers is that it's all it's creating language uh, in a way which was the challenge for a language learner mm. so it's changed the target to some extent uh, uh, of what you need to be good at just just as you've said that um, uh, especially with written uh, english language um, we we know that uh, our students will be able to create texts which are accurate, well structured um, from generative AI. Mm. So that isn't really going to be their challenge in the future. Their challenge in the future is going to be producing a text which is effective, mm. which people want to read, which is interesting, which is persuasive. Uh, so those are a different set of skills mm. to what they face at the moment. Yeah, and 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 texts that we're going off on a s small tangent here, but yeah. briefly, but texts that have uh, for lack of a better word, that have soul. Yeah. Because just a few days ago, there was it was in the newspapers uh, today or yesterday, this sermon in, in, in a church, I can't even remember which country it was, uh, where hundreds of people attended a sermon delivered by an avatar, uh, completely generated by AI. Oh, that's wow. interesting. Uh, <laughs> and of course, you know, th that's a wonderful example because that is a type of experience that is not factual, it's not yeah. transmissive, it's not mechanical, yeah. it's something Thing, spiritual or, and well, one of the comments of the attendees was that it was it was in terms of the content etc it was factually accurate and it sort of made sense and what have you but it just lacked soul yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that yeah. makes a lot of sense yeah
and in a way that comes back to I think what you were start how you started by talking about the roles of a teacher. Yes. And one of the roles of a teacher is that motivating, exactly. creating that social motivation for students to learn. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know that's not going to go away. No, that per- and, and that personal connection, knowing that there's someone who actually cares about yeah. how you're doing, what you're doing, and so on. Yeah. Um, yeah, I yeah. think that is going to come even more to the forefront and yeah. in some ways will be easier to do as a teacher because you'll have more time to invest in that aspect of your teaching because some of the more mechanical aspects of the job perhaps can be given over to, to AI. Thanks for listening to this episode of Talking ELT. We hope you join us for the next one. If you want to listen to the rest of our conversation or hear us talk about other important issues, please follow the link in the description. We'll be posting episodes regularly across all major podcasting platforms, and you can find links to all our channels there. Hope to see you soon.